One of the most common claims regarding evolution is the claim that antibiotic resistance is evidence for evolution. The claim states that since bacteria are capable of adapting into antibiotics by mutating the cells, then that will mean that the bacteria has turned into a new type of thing. However, is there really any truth to this claim? On the contrary to probably belief, if you study how bacteria actually adapt to the antibiotics, you will find out that no, it is not evidence for evolution, and I will explain why. There is no one definite answer for how exactly bacteria can adapt. There are many ways that bacteria can adapt to the antibiotic. One of the ways is by sacrificing enzymes to allow the bacteria to deactivate or disable the drug molecule from the antibiotic. But since we're strictly talking about evolution and mutation, I'm going to talk about how exactly does the mutation cause the bacteria to adapt to the antibiotic. Shrinking down to the cellular level of the bacteria, you will find that there is this thing called the ribosome. The ribosome in the cellular level is basically a protein manufacturer. The ribosome basically manufactures proteins. Now, you may be asking yourself, why are proteins important? Well, the thing is, if there are no proteins, there will be no life because proteins perform specific functions of the biological and molecular level. It's important to always know that there is no such thing as one type of protein. There are many different types of proteins. However, living species or living biological organisms need a specific one type of protein. If the biological species or organism has received the wrong proteins, then the organism will surely die. Be that is because the proteins that is within the biological organism is performing the wrong functions and therefore is not compatible with functioning other biological or molecular systems. The term wrong proteins is basically the key word to understand how antibiotics work. But first, we need to understand how proteins are made. Proteins are made out of a series of amino acid chain sequences. When the amino acids are chained together, say about 20 or 100 amino acids chaining together, then it forms a protein. In the molecular level, there are 20 different types of amino acids. And the question of whether the protein is right or wrong for the living organism depends on how those amino acids chain together. However, when you're trying to create a living organism, you need to set the amino acids in the, not just in the right sequence, but also in a proper order. In other words, not only do you have to set it in the sequence or chain them up, but you have to hit that right combination out of quintillion of other possible combinations. In the basic structure of the protein, there are one in the quintillion possible combinations that the amino acid will create the proper protein for the living organism and there are a quintillion to one possible combinations that will create the wrong proteins and cause the living organism to die or not exist. That is because order and sequence of the amino acids chained together actually matter in order for life to exist. Put one amino acid in the wrong place and you mess up everything. In chemistry and biology, each amino acid is either left-handed or right-handed. In life, only left-handed amino acids are required in order for life to exist. However, if you give life the right-handed amino acid, then life as you know it will not exist. The left-handed amino acid, although it looks the same as the right-handed one, actually performs different function compared to the right one. It seems that if you put the right amino acid on, on life, it will actually cause the living organism to not exist or probably cause a horrible effect. This biological and molecular process is called homochirality. Homochirality describes how molecular mechanisms of amino acids and proteins affect the behavior of life. Now, I will show you a little scene from Breaking Bad of Heisenberg explaining what homochirality is and what it does. Enjoy the video. So. The term chiral derives from the Greek word ham. Now the concept here being that just as your left hand and your right hand are mere images of one another, right? Identical and yet opposite. Well, so too organic compounds can exist as mere image forms 
of one another all the way down at the molecular level. But although they may look the same, they don't always behave the same. For instance, for instance, uh, I'm sorry, uh, for instance, uh, thalidomide, the, the right-handed isomer of the drug thalidomide is a perfectly fine, good medicine to give to a pregnant woman to prevent morning sickness, but make the mistake of giving that same pregnant woman the left-handed isomer of the drug thalidomide, and her child will be born with horrible birth defects, which is precisely what happened in the 1950s. So, chiral, chorality, mirrored images, right? Active, inactive, good, bad. So, yes, Ben? Is this gonna be on the murder? What? Is this gonna be on the midterm? Uh, the chorality in the midterm, no, no, no. Well, maybe, maybe, yeah. Yes, you know, but prepared for it to be on the midterm. Can't hurt to know it, right? So, knowledge is power. Now that you understand what homochorality is and how do amino acids and proteins affect the behavior of life, now let's talk about how antibiotics really work and how does the mutation really cause the bacteria to adapt. When the bacteria is exposed to the antibiotic, the antibiotic releases these drug molecules. These drug molecules basically go into the cellular level of the bacteria and look for the ribosome. Once the drug molecules are in the ribosome, the drug molecule attaches to the ribosome. Now you may be asking, how exactly does the ribosome, excuse me, how exactly does the drug molecule attach to the ribosome? Good question. In the cellular level, each Every organ, such as the ribosome, the stomach, or any type of organ you can think of, has these things called the receptor site. The receptor site is basically an open site that allows molecules to interact. Once these molecules are on the receptor site, the molecule interacts on the receptor and causes the organ to perform different functions. Now, since we're talking about a drug molecule, the drug molecule basically attaches to the opening site of the ribosome and causes the ribosome to perform to act differently in other words perform the wrong proteins as i have said before in my previous videos the production of wrong proteins causes harmful or daily effects for life if the bacteria has received the wrong proteins the bacteria will be sick and will simply not live because its body is not receiving the right proteins in order for it to function properly now this is exactly how antibiotics work when the antibiotic drug molecule is attached to the ribosome, the ribosome manufactures wrong proteins and therefore causes the bacteria to not grow, to not reproduce, or anything like that, which basically causes the bacteria to die. However, in certain cases, there are bacteria that are capable of mutating and therefore being resistant to the antibiotic. Now, how exactly does that work? Well, evolutionists claim that the bacteria has e either got stronger or it has increased genetic information which basically got new genes to resist the antibiotic. However, that is specifically not true. What really happens in uh, the mutation is that the mutation changes the receptor site of the ribosome. It either changes or deforms it in a way that the drug molecule cannot attach to it and cause it to interact with the ribosome. So when the mutation changes or mutates the site of the, of the receptor site of the ribosome, it is hard for the drug molecule to attach to it and cause the ribosome to manufacture wrong proteins in order to kill the bacteria. Now that is exactly what happens in a mutation when the bacteria adapts. The mutation causes the ribosome receptor site to change. On the contrary to popular evolutionary belief, the bacteria did not turn into a brand new type of bacteria, nor did it increase genetic information. Now speaking of genetic information, even though the mutation has changed the receptor site of the ribosome, the bacteria has actually degraded the genetic information because it has lost sensitivity to it. A loss of sensitivity in genetics is considered a degradation of genetic information.
So instead of evolutionists telling you that the bacteria has gained new genetic information, it actually lost or degrade genetic information. As a matter of fact, this is what mutations actually do. No matter whether you see it at the microscopic level or the macro level, it seems that these mutations or a, that seem adaptive actually involve a degradation or loss of genetic information. Even the way of how the bacteria adapts to the antibiotic by sacrificing enzymes, the bacteria has actually gone weaker because the, there aren't enough enzymes to catalyze the biochemical reactions for the bacteria. Since there aren't any enough biochemical reactions, the bacteria loses energy much more faster and eventually makes them more weaker. So as you can see folks, antibiotic resistance really has nothing to do with evolution. It has more to do with changing the receptor site of the ribosome by the mutation. And it also involves the loss or degradation of genetic information rather than the increase that evolutionists want you to believe. Alright folks, so that's the end of my lecture. So if you have any questions, concerns, please let me know in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.